juntos a los nuevos tiempos, reinventarnos, de desaparecer eh, para crear un nuevo sistema moderno y eficaz que ya se entiende por todas partes. My name is Hamza Walker, and I'm the director of LAX Art, which is located pretty much in the middle of Hollywood, 7000 Santa Monica Boulevard, Santa Monica and Orange. I started in 2016. Since the founding of LAX Art, LA has changed greatly. The board of LAX Art, you know, they found themselves facing a different landscape than when the organization was founded. I was brought on to facilitate the kind of consideration of now. What kind of role can it play within the cultural ecology of Los Angeles right here, right now? LAX Art was founded as an alternative space. Alternatives meant different things in, at different moments. What alternative meant in the 1970s with the advent of video, performance, new media, land art, practices that were outside of the mainstream, the mainstream being defined by commercial galleries. Very different than what alternative came to mean a decade later in the 1980s. Those spaces really saw themselves as champions of voices that were considered marginalized. Fast forward to the here and now and Los Angeles, which is the seat of a number of art schools or art programs, produces a bumper crop of young talent every year. So LAX Art was founded pretty much to take up the slack. So alternative was pretty much synonymous with emerging. Ten years later, the scene has changed. It's not that emerging has been shed from its mission. It's just no longer at its core. So finding a footing and figuring out what is alternative now, and I'm entertaining it as a question rather than coming to people and saying that LAX Art is the answer. <laughs> it's like, well, we'll see. <laughs> exterior of the building now. We invited Barbara Kruger. We commissioned her to do a new piece. LAX Art uh, always did facade projects. Now I'm interested in literally really treating it, you know, the Orange Street, the entrance, and the Santa Monica side, like in the round, right? So to be a lot more aggressive in um, taking that on, and not just as a project space or something ancillary, but to treat that as our other gallery. Contemporary visual art, you can't think about it in isolation. You can't think of it as independent from poetry, dance, or music. So there's a kind of very beautiful rubbing of shoulders with other disciplines. So to be able to host those kinds of events alongside the exhibitions is very important to me because they give it a context that's necessary to understanding what the visual arts are. It's hopelessly perforated. Your public programs, your events, your talks, performances, your concerts, your screenings, those things are a profile of the organization. So it isn't simply a collection of stuff or things that you do, but to have those things begin to reflect a sensibility that holds together as a program, so that, that defines you. Sitting at his station, he's an essay unto himself. As a field, what do we expect out of contemporary art? How does it reflect how we live now? So to ask that works of art reflect now is a very big ask, given the complexities of the present moment. And then art historically, how does a work of art, contemporary art, relate to the last canonical movements? How does work now negotiate with those movements? And in some sense, they can be saying, look, that was then and this is now. Right. What was an operating paradigm of the 1960s is wholly inadequate to try and address the socio-political climate. So you might have to have a paradigm shift or break. And I feel like my job as a curator in part, in terms of surveying the field of cultural production, is to perhaps sometimes look for fault lines or breaks and determine how is this work working.
Catherine Taft. I'm the deputy director and curator here at LAX Art, and we're standing in our main space, our main gallery. The title is kind of a ready-made. It's a piece of graffiti that Hamza Walker spotted in the Frogtown neighborhood of Los Angeles. So it was scrawled on the wall and said remote castration. And he sent me a picture right away and said, this is a really great title for a show. I'd say every artwork in the show has a relationship to power and notions of power, be that the feminine power or certainly masculine patriarchal power. I think this is a topic that resonates with many contemporary artists' work. You can't really do a show about the idea of castration or the idea of patriarchy and power without kind of hearing the male perspective on that as well. And I think that's really inherent to thinking through this issue and certainly thinking through feminist ideas, this Me Too moment, this Time's Up moment. <laughs> So we actually have five male artists in the show. John Altoon, Paul McCarthy, Benjamin Weissman, Daniel Gator Lomack, and Johnny Moore. I think castration operates in a literal sense, but also in, as I said, a poetic or metaphorical sense. Certainly, the John Altoons, which show a kind of disembodied penis, are having to do with losing one's member, losing this part of your body that could be a source of power. In this case, Altoon has drawn his, his member with his wife's high heel shoe, so it's this kind of loving gift to her in a way. I would look at Catherine Garcia's pictures, who in her own life is really invested in a kind of contemporary goddess worship, I would say. These are works that deal with sacred geometries and certainly deal with the feminine figure and the feminine body and the kind of power that is inherent in that. <laughs> Paul McCarthy, who has dealt with the theme of castration in many of his works for, for decades. We have three drawings in which he's showing a male being castrated, and these are from his uh, White Snow project in which the animals are putting Paul or Walt Disney on trial. So it's really putting the father on trial or masculinity is on trial. Right next to his work, a piece by Benjamin Weissman, the language in his piece is a little bit eerie. It's, it's kind of talking about the tools that one could take out this intimate task. And in a way, it might be a self-castration or a self-reflective moment of seeing what one could live without. Sue, in her work, has always questioned systems of violence against women. And so some of these works, some of her earliest, you know, deal with that in a very gestural way. They're really sketchy, kind of loose representations of bodies kind of coming undone or, or body parts, certainly phalluses, legs, breasts. This is a piece by Daniel Gator Lomack called G is for Goddess. And in the piece, he performs with this female effigy and is really kind of asking her, how do I take on your power as a female? And so he literally takes on the sculpture and wears it and then goes through a series of gestures, actions, of kind of working through his own femininity. It's really about giving her power, hoping to share some of her power, or understand that power as well. We also see works by Jenny Holzer, which are very aggressive and pointed. We also have a group of drawings by Johnny Moore, and Johnny was primarily kind of known for his mural painting, and he's recently made these drawings kind of as a loving homage to Ava Hess. So they're all portraits of Ava Hess. I think some of them are more imagined scenarios where she's becoming a little more sexualized. In some cases, her head even becomes a kind of phallus as well. So she really is this kind of a fantasy creature, as well as one of the most important female artists, I think, of our, of our day. Nova Jiang, who's really thinking through violence and histories and patterns of violence. <laughs> I've worked with Nancy Buchanan for many, many years. So to look back on a career of an artist like that over decades and see that she's still thinking through these ideas and that these ideas of first wave feminism are still as fresh as always, I think is really interesting. 
and to take it to a place that's also playful and can be funny or awkward or uh, uncomfortable or sexual. You know, I think that's all part of thinking through feminism and thinking what feminism's going to look like as we go forward. Every work in the show brings something different to the table and together they're a kind of essay to this idea of power and masculinity and how we can maybe take it down a notch, how we can transform it, how we can use it more productively in our, our daily lives. Art can be a confrontation and it can make people think and it can really open up ideas and certainly ask questions. So if we've made our visitors ask questions about themselves, their own subjectivity, their own relationship to power, then I think that's a successful show.